Next on AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show. Here's Brian O'Neill. And we're glad to be joined now by Republican Congressman Nick Langworthy. Congressman, thank you for phoning in. Oh, it's uh, great to be back with you and your listeners, Brian. Congressman Langworthy, uh, going to start out with a topic. It's kind of a New York City thing, but I'm wondering if you have been in touch with uh, anybody in the state legislature. Will this become a statewide issue? The wood-fired uh, pizza uh, law that they've come up with in New York City, so you can't have any of those uh, delicious wood-burned uh, or wood-fired uh, pizzas. Uh, do you see the state legislature? It's you know, part of the whole Green New Deal thing in New York State. You s- you're against that in Washington. Um, your thoughts on that becoming a nationwide or statewide issue? Well, I, I, I will tell you, I never thought in my life we'd be uh, – having conversations in public office about <laughs> how we cook pizzas. Um, I will tell you that there's no good pizza to have in Washington. That, that I can assure <laughs> you. But um, in, as it goes to the New York City Council, that's where great socialist ideas first sprout up, then the state takes them, and then the national government uh, tries them. So, um, you know, there's just tremendous outrage. A lot of, uh, you know, New York um, – elected leaders are coming out coming out hard bringing awareness to this but this this is just another example of one of these wrong-headed green new deal initiatives where they're seeking a solution for a problem that does not exist and uh you know meanwhile india china pakistan you know they have way more population than us you know they're burning uh, the dirtiest coal in the world to, to produce their energy needs, and, and we're worried about, you know, some poor pizza maker that's just trying to make ends meet, making a delicious yeah. meal for families. Uh, this is uh, just another example of these wrong-headed left, leftist ideas that are trying to tell you in a nanny state fashion how to live your life, and and I'm dead set against it, and so are many, many others, and, and you know. It, us expressing our outrage on things like this. This is just like the gas stove regulations yep. that were in the EPA. We fought against those a couple of weeks ago, passed some legislation, you know, to, to try to stop this dead uh, challenge the Senate to do the same. Uh, there's a war on natural gas in this country, and we have to be serious about it because not only have they stifled our opportunity to harness natural gas to to to, to bring it out of the ground in this state and create great jobs and lower home heating costs and, and cheaper energy. Uh, they are trying to shut off our ability to use natural gas from all sources uh, to uh, heat our homes, to cook our food, uh, and to create jobs. Uh, this war on natural gas is S9. You know, it, it, it is the bridge fuel to the future. And uh, other states are thriving because of it. So I'm opposed to all of these sorts of uh, Green New Deal initiatives that are out there trying to tell you how to life. Congressman, uh, the recent indictment of former President Donald J. Trump, uh, what did you make of that? Well, listen, he, he deserves his day in court to, to defend himself against all of the things they've laid out in, uh, in, in the thing to put on this is we have a two-tiered system of justice in this country. I mean, there's um, Hunter Biden. You know, I, I happen to sit on the House Oversight Committee. So uh, part of my work has been um, dealing with the Biden family situation here. Uh, in, and I hate to, to put it this way, but it, it resembles more of a crime family than it does um, just a, a, a humble family in public service. I mean, I was in the Treasury Department one afternoon uh, in Washington, and uh, under the watchful eye of FBI agents, myself and many of my oversight colleagues leafed through over 2,000 pages of suspicious activities reports from banks um, that would make your head spin at home in terms of financial transfers uh, from foreign entities, foreign governments, all while, you know, Hunter never registered as a foreign agent. You know, some of this is when um, 
uh, Joe Biden was vice president. Some of it was last year. And then fast forward, uh, you know, the FBI first denied its existence, but a document, you know, dictating, you know, human sources in the Ukraine and uh, the U- Ukraine energy company Burisma uh, have uh, said that they paid Joe Biden $5 million and Hunter Biden $5 million. Um, the FBI first denied that document's existence, but we had proof that it existed. And our chairman of our committee, James Comer, fought and pushed and subpoenaed um, FBI Director Chris Ray. He refused to come, refused to produce the document. We threatened that we were going to hold him in contempt of Congress. It's a pretty drastic action. Necessary. What do you know? They admitted the document existed, and we all got an opportunity to go view it. Heavily redacted, I might add. Lots of things blacked out. Um, and important facts blacked out. But I've read this document, and I've held it in hands, and I will tell you that uh, uh, it's pretty crystal clear that there's there's some very thick, dense smoke here, and usually where there's thick, dense smoke, there's a raging inferno somewhere underneath. Um, we're going to continue our work in the Oversight Committee because, um, you know, if, if the Biden's name were Langworthy or Trump, uh, they'd be in and uh, the fact that Hunter Biden has had a, uh, a, a very simple um, series of misdemeanors that he's pled to, and they, they're trying to say all is over with, we're just getting started. And uh, we refuse to accept that the DOJ isn't going to do further prosecution. Uh, but, you know, President Trump, they're transferring to jail for 100 years for misdemeanors. That is sort of the we're living in. We're trying the leading candidate for president in the Republican Party right now uh, is being prosecuted by the president's Department of Justice at his attorney general's insistence. This is like a tin pot third world dictatorship move. And every president has uh, had issues with documents after they've left uh, uh, left the White House and, and handling of those documents. Uh, he has he to the federal I mean, the fact that charges rise at this level, get this kind of see, uh, off of a former president while he's running for president for another term, I think it's just an indication of the kind of government you we're talking to Republican Congressman uh, Nick Langworthy. Congressman, uh, did you happen to catch the Fox News, Bread Bear News Hour last night? He had the IRS whistleblower on talking about uh, the Hunter Biden investigation. Well, I have not watched the interview myself, but I know a lot of people are buzzing about it. And this, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the Ways and Means Chairman Jason Smith uh, has brought forward, uh, you know, information from this whistleblower. Um, you know, all this stuff is coming home to roost, and, and uh, Joe Biden has now lawyered up. Uh, this is a, uh, a big development, I think, in, in the situation, because what all Republicans have been told that are trying to point out uh, a lot of this hypocrisy is, well, you, you're just a Trump supporter. No, this is about we need to, we deserve as Americans to know, is our president on the take to the Chinese or to any other foreign agency? You know, how did Joe Biden get so rich so quick? I, I don't begrudge anyone for making an honest living, but right now he's the president. And in, and I don't suspect he will be after 24, but uh, right now he has an awful lot of power. I mean, he's the most powerful man in the world. And if his family and he are compromised by foreign governments because of the wealth that they've amassed, the American people deserve to know that. And there is a mainstream media blackout on this story. Um, you know, our, our major networks, our local television affiliates, the great newspapers in this country, or I, I should say once great newspapers in this country, uh, have all gone out of their way to not cover the stories around the Biden, especially Hunter Biden. And I'm not talking, about, I, I don't care about the laptop and the pictures with him doing drugs. Or I, I'm not getting into the personal side. This is about why did you take money what did you get paid for, and what did you offer? And, and there's, you know, a clear text message here that Joe, uh, that Hunter Biden is threatening a Chinese agent, uh, in that his father is sitting there looking over his shoulder. This is, this kind of stuff doesn't happen once. This is behavior, and this is the way 
that Hunter Biden has made his living by threatening, by peddling influence, and we're just getting started, as I said, Brian. I'm tempted to say, ah, oh, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking to Republican Congressman uh, Nick Langworthy. Um, Congressman, you voted on the resolution to impeach President Joe Biden. Uh, um, do you think that can go anywhere? Well, I didn't vote uh, to impeach him. Right, I right. I voted to refer the impeachment uh, resolution to the Homeland Security Committee uh, as well as the Judiciary Committee. Uh, you know, we've had a, a series of privileged resolutions come forward in the Congress here the last few weeks. Members, this is usually something done by um, the minority, and these are actually being done by Republicans as they push for these privileged resolutions to um, – they, they're forced to create a vote right away. Warren Boebert tried to create a quickie impeachment trial by using um, you know, the ability to push a privileged rev- resolution on the floor – and make us vote on impeachment in two days. That's not the way this works. I mean, I take impeachment extremely seriously. I know the Speaker of the House takes it seriously. I think what the Democrats did is reprehensible with impeachment, where they, everything's a rush to impeachment, rush to impeachment. Um, it's not what people elected us to do. Um, I, I would like to see Joe Biden defeated in the next election. That, that's uh, uh, certainly something that uh, I think would be good for America. Uh, but uh, every every president going through an impeachment trial, uh, I, I I don't subscribe to that theory. Now, if and we are digging through these facts, as I said, we're just getting started. If the subsequent facts are there, and the smoking gun emerges, an impeachment inquiry needs to be passed. So what we've done is referred that to committee. Uh, stay tuned. I mean, we, we may get there. I don't know. I, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of the facts. Now, Joe Biden's never going to be convicted um, unless the evidence is so overwhelming because the Democrats uh, on his side of the aisle are not going to join uh, Republicans in the Senate. So, that you know, I, I ultimately like to see what is the success level. The other reason I'm not the, the biggest proponent of impeachment is the idea that Kamala Harris would be the president of the United States is something that would keep me awake at night. <laughs> you don't like those redundancies in her speeches? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> her, her cackles. Uh, I, I don't think that I could handle that in the White House. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back in just a moment with the Republican Congressman Nick Langworthy. For an Allstate agent, providing protection that fits your life is something they take, well, personally. Allstate agents are committed to learning about your needs and helping to personalize protection to meet them. From bundling your auto and home insurance with ease to evaluating optional coverage based on your protection needs, your Allstate agent can help build an insurance proposal that fits your life. Are you in good hands? Contact the Hornell Allstate Agency of Michelle Cornell Herbert at 607-324-5611 today for a free quote. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability, Allstate State Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Allstate Property and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Show also brought to you by Classy Cafe, Main Street in Hornell. Breakfast goes on weekdays till 11 a.m. After that, these specials start up in addition to their regular menu. Uh, meat lovers, pizza panini with fries, fajita chicken specialty tossed salad, chicken Caesar wrap on a Wrap served with fries, soup of the day, chicken noodle soup. Classic Cafe, watch it. Are they going to be close July 4th and 5th for the holiday? Back with Republican Congressman uh, Nick Langworthy. Before I get to H.R. 2, House Resolution 2, the border legislation the House passed that you voted for, I wanted to get to the Middle Class Borrower Protection Act. Tell us about that, Congressman Langworthy. Well, I, I, we, ha- we have... Um a situation right now where you are, you have Democrats uh, in the Congress and in the White House that are trying to do social engineering. Uh, we have mortgage policies that are based upon creditworthiness. What we saw last week is is, is a push uh, by Democrats to charge people that have good credit more 
and less to people that are not as credit worthy. Now that that turns our banking system upside down, and it just defies the common sense uh, that the, the system is based on. And Maxine Waters came into the rules committee, and she was panting and raving about how you know this is we do tax cuts for the rich only. It, it's just basic. If you are going to uh, get a mortgage, you know you have to be in your best position possible. They want people that have the most credit-worthy credit scores to pay additional fees to subsidize those that don't have uh, have have good enough credit to qualify for those prime uh, rates. This is just this is just un-American, uh, and it, it, it is more indicative of the government uh, that they want to run. I mean, there's a there's a, a full push for the redistribution of wealth in this country. Uh, and that you see that in the student loan package that um, you have uh, that we're waiting for word from the Supreme Court on it. Both houses of Congress have expressed displeasure in it. Um, and, you know, student loans that people took that, you know, they claim they can't pay back. I mean, it, the question of can't or don't want to, I think, is really more the, more the question. Uh, I'm more sympathetic to those that have a uh, pretty healthy uh, balance sheet on the student loans, but I don't believe in giveaways uh, on on these programs. You sign for a loan, uh, and you should make good on it, just like if you sign for a loan on a mortgage, you have to pay the mortgage or the bank comes and takes the house. If you, if you get a car uh, and you sign for a, a note, uh, you pay the payments or the, they come back and take the car. Uh, I mean, that, that is what... Um, is the, the, the way our banking system works in uh, our student loan programs. There's only 31% of my constituents in the 23rd Congressional District have a four-year college degree. And, and it's, it's noble, but it's choice. And there's also lots of people, and I've talked to them uh, out on the campaign trail um, in my travels throughout the district, yeah. people are like, you know, I, I didn't take the vacations. I didn't go buy the fancy pickup truck. Uh, and I helped my kids go through school. And now someone that didn't, they're going to get rewarded and get $20,000 wiped out. I, I mean, I just, I'm just so uh, fundamentally opposed to that because uh, we're telling kids in this country, and this happened a lot during COVID when we were giving away a lot of free money out of necessity, but then in some cases we went overboard. We're teaching the next generation that there's such a thing as a free lunch. There's not. Eventually, we have to pay the bill. And that's why this country's $32 trillion in debt right now. And we have to claw our way out of that. And final question for you, Congressman Nick Langworthy. Uh, House Resolution 2, the border legislation. Yes. You know, it's, it's our signature border package. Uh, you know, all of the stuff we talk about, whether it's, you know, we can't even touch immigration without first having a secure border. Uh, President Biden decided that when he took office, he wasn't going to enforce the border laws of this country. Um, And they were going to scrap um, the wall, which was working, and it needs to be finished. Uh, They're going, our Border Patrol agents, they've come to testify before us in the Oversight Committee. I know they've been in Judiciary, uh, all the different committees. Uh, We're seeing in overflow of immigration uh, in after Title 42 expired because of the COVID uh, uh, pandemic ending. You have all the migrants coming across these borders. And now you're, you're hearing every politician here call them asylum seekers uh, on the left. And they're saying that because they're trying to normalize this. It's not normal. It's, they, they didn't come into this country legally. And uh, now they're here for four, five, six years while they await a judicial hearing to determine whether or not they're entitled to stay. Uh, this is this is a backdoor immigration. They're violating the law and they're costing taxpayers in this state now because of New York City's sanctuary city policies and New York State sanctuary state policies. They're costing us billions. And Kathy Hochul's crying for more money. She wants us to change work laws. Uh, no, we're not going to change the laws of this country uh, so that it fits 
their problems that they created. I mean, everyone, and Joe Biden needs to look in the mirror and, and ask, you know, look, see who is responsible for the fact that we have these problems uh, right now in this country. And we have, we did something about it. We passed HR2, our border, uh, our border bill, which would finish the wall, it would give, you know, more assets to our border patrol agents. It would, it would help states uh, deal with, you know, some of this because we have to, we have to take the border seriously because our, uh, the fentanyl crisis that we're facing uh, in, in our communities, you know, you're facing it in Hornell. You're facing it across the southern tier. I talked to the police departments. I talked to victims, and, and we're going to be doing some forums on this coming up uh, about what this is doing to communities. It's ripping them apart, and, and people are, are facing tremendous loss. The Chinese make this fentanyl cheap. They sell it to the cartels, and the cartels mule it into this country. This is what's happening here in America right now. And if we don't seal this border, we can't solve our immigration problems. I mean, I know we got farmers that want visas for, you know, workers in an expansion so we could have dairy um, to have, you know, a, a, a migrant workforce that's predictable, uh, safe, and legal. Uh, I want to help them do that. But until we have a White House that will actually do the job of protecting America by protecting our border, we can't. We've been speaking with Republican Congressman and Nick Langworthy uh, out of time. Congressman, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. It, it's my honor, Brian. Look forward to seeing you back in Hornell soon. That's great. It's our honor, Congressman. Thank you so much. Newsmaker continues just a moment. Walker Metalsmiths has been making and selling Celtic.